Hello lovelies, and welcome to Toka's Tales. In this episode, we follow Ethan, a literature student, who unexpectedly finds himself in the center of a cross-dressing competition at his university. As he transforms into Scarlet, under the watchful eye of Professor Martinez and a group of enthusiastic girls, he embarks on an unfamiliar, yet enlightening journey of self-discovery, filled with nervous anticipation, daring transformations, and unexpected interactions that challenge him in ways he never expected. Sounds interesting? Let's dive headfirst into this captivating tale together. Ethan, engrossed in his battered copy of Wuthering Heights, barely noticed the shift in atmosphere as he sat at the back of the university's lecture hall. He was the solitary male voice amidst a vibrant chorus of feminine intellect and wit in his literature study group. The room, steeped in the scent of old paper and echoes of timeless tales, seemed to resonate with the thrum of anticipation that prickled the air. Yet, Ethan was ensconced in the darkly passionate world of Heathcliff and Catherine, oblivious to the approaching storm that was about to shake his carefully balanced world. The storm arrived in the form of Professor Maria Martinez, a voluptuous woman in her early thirties, who wore her dark curls loose and possessed a natural grace that commanded attention. She was as famous for her fiery spirit as she was for her entrancing beauty. Good afternoon, class, she greeted, her Spanish accent curling around each syllable. She raised a hand to quiet the inevitable chatter. We have a special announcement. With a flourish, she unveiled a brightly colored flyer that read, National Cross Dressing Competition. Ethan blinked, his heart skipping a beat, as every pair of eyes in the room swiveled in his direction. Embarrassment warmed Ethan's cheeks, and he raised a hand defensively. You can forget about it. The chorus of disappointed groans didn't escape him. He sunk into his chair, wishing he could be swallowed by the wooden folds. After the echoes of the dismissal bell had faded, Professor Martinez, still holding the flyer, turned to Ethan, who had yet to leave the room. Ethan, she called, her voice carrying a quiet intensity. Could you stay back for a moment? There's something we need to discuss. Caught in her gaze, Ethan found himself held in place. He complied nodding and taking a seat opposite her as the room emptied of the lingering students. She held the colorful flyer loosely in her hand, using the other to smooth down her dark, untamed curls. Her eyes, always expressive, held a particular seriousness. Ethan, she began, her Spanish accent emphasizing each word. This project is more than it appears on the surface. It's not just about winning a competition, or even the monetary prize that comes with it, it's a powerful platform to increase understanding and acceptance of diverse gender identities. We have an opportunity to affect change, and I believe it's crucial we seize it. Ethan sat in silence, his mind awash with swirling thoughts. He respected Professor Martinez, admired her passion even, but his initial reluctance was hard to shake off. The thought of being the center of such a project filled him with trepidation. He looked at the professor, worry etching lines onto his youthful face. I understand what you're saying, Professor Martinez, he hesitated, but I need to think about this. Seeing his hesitation, Professor Martinez's tone shifted. A playful glint flashed in her eyes as she leaned back, crossing her arms lightly. Well, she said, her voice dancing with mischief, we could also consider the practical aspect. The prize money would greatly benefit our department, and as the one spearheading the project, it might just give my academic career a helpful nudge. Not that it's the main point, of course. A flicker of a smile passed over Ethan's face. The professor's ability to find humor in such a situation was contagious. Still, his mind was far from made. I'll think about it, Professor Martinez, he said. I promise. She nodded, the corners of her lips curling up in understanding. All right, Ethan, I respect that. Let's meet tomorrow morning, and you can let me know your decision then. As Ethan left the room, he felt the gravity of the situation pressing down on him, the reality of the decision he had to make casting a long shadow over his usual routine. Throughout the night, Ethan found himself haunted by uncertainty and a strange excitement. His mind relentlessly revisited Professor Martinez's proposition, dissecting it from every angle. Amidst the turmoil, a curiosity nestled within him, a curiosity about the world of femininity and its unexplored territories. His heart pounded at the idea of dipping his toes into this new reality. 
He had always admired the elegance of women's clothing, the fluidity of their movements, their unashamed expression of emotions. But it was one thing to admire from afar, and another to immerse oneself completely. The risk of ridicule, the fear of not fitting in, the unknown, all these created a tempest of worry within him. Morning found Ethan bleary-eyed, but resolute. Walking into Professor Martinez's office, he took a deep breath, feeling a strange mix of fear and exhilaration. Professor Martinez, he said. I'll do it. A smile spread across her face, transforming her from stern academic to elated co-conspirator. Excellent, Ethan. The girls will be thrilled. They're all on board and more than eager to help. His heart lurched at her words, panic flooding him as he imagined himself in an array of feminine attire, under the scrutinizing gaze of twenty girls. Seeing his discomfort, Martinez swiftly reassured him. Don't worry, Ethan. We're all here to support each other. I've arranged a private classroom for our extracurricular activities. The girls are already excited to participate. The day seemed to drag on endlessly, each tick of the clock echoing his rising anxiety. His focus wavered during his classes, his mind filled with swirling fears and expectations. Finally, the last bell rang, and Ethan found himself standing in front of the agreed classroom, heart pounding in his chest. He opened the door to be met by a sea of expectant faces. All twenty girls, their eyes sparkling with anticipation, and Professor Martinez, her encouraging smile putting him slightly at ease. He swallowed hard, stepping into the room as a chorus of excited chatter welcomed him. His journey into the unknown was about to begin, and despite his fears, there was a sliver of excitement that was impossible to ignore. As the meeting unfolded, it became clear to Ethan that it was mostly about organizational matters. Yet each moment that passed amplified his growing anxiety. As Professor Martinez described the stages of the competition, Ethan found his palms growing sweaty. The first stage was business formal wear, a situation he could just about stomach. But when Professor Martinez explained the subsequent stages, a bikini stage followed by an evening wear stage, his heart pounded in his chest like a wild drum. The thought of him, posing in a bikini in front of an audience, was almost too much to bear. His cheeks flushed a deep shade of crimson, and he busied himself with his notes, avoiding the gaze of the professor and his classmates. Throughout it all, Professor Martinez remained supportive and understanding. Her encouraging words and patient demeanor were a beacon of reassurance in the midst of his nervousness. When the meeting came to an end, and as Ethan gathered his things to leave, Professor Martinez stopped him with a gentle call of his name. Ethan, she said, her voice steady and comforting. Don't forget to fully shave for tomorrow. We'll be starting preparations then. Her words hung in the air as he walked out of the classroom. It was all becoming very real, very fast. Yet, amidst the storm of his anxieties, he couldn't deny the thrill of anticipation that pulsed in his veins. He was about to step into a world unknown, and as frightening as it was, it was also unexpectedly exhilarating. On his way home in the evening, an inexplicable urge steered Ethan towards a local beauty store. The fluorescent lights overhead cast an unfamiliar glare on the aisles of products designed for women. His heart pounded in his chest, as if he was infiltrating a world that wasn't his. His hand hovered over the shelf of pink razors, their femininity stark in contrast to his usual navy blue. Ethan felt a strange excitement, mingled with a heavy dose of embarrassment. When he meandered towards the aisle of bath gels, a store attendant approached him. Can I help you find something? She asked, her gaze friendly, yet curious. The question jolted him, a harsh reminder of his incongruity in this environment. I, I'm good, thank you, he stammered, quickly grabbing a bottle of bath gel adorned with a picture of blooming roses. He rushed to the counter, paid, and exited the store, relief washing over him as the cool evening air hit his face. Back home, he studied his purchases under the privacy of his room's light, a strange sense of anticipation coursing through his veins. Morning found Ethan awake before his alarm. He started his bath, pouring generous amounts of the rose-scented gel into the warm water. The aroma that wafted up was a heady blend of floral notes, a scent he associated with femininity. He found himself marveling at the sweet fragrance, his heart pounding as he stepped into the bathtub. The process of shaving was surreal. The pink razor felt foreign in his hands, as he worked his way from his face to his legs. 
Every stroke felt like an admission, a pledge to the path he had chosen. As the water washed away the remnants of his body hair, Ethan felt a strange sense of liberation. His classes that day were a haze of anticipation. His mind teetered between nervousness and an intense curiosity about what the afternoon held for him. When the time came, Ethan found himself standing outside the agreed classroom once again. This time, the room was filled with bags of clothes, wigs, and makeup kits neatly arranged on tables. The sight brought a fresh wave of trepidation, but also a budding thrill of what was to come. Taking a deep breath, he stepped into the room, embarking on his journey into the unknown. As Ethan stepped into the bustling room, he was met with a flurry of activity. The girls were abuzz, assigning roles among themselves, with an efficiency that came from a lifetime of such endeavors. Natalie, with her steady hand and an artist's eye for detail, was chosen to handle the makeup. Amelia, a cosplayer who could turn a few scraps of fabric into a work of art, volunteered to manage the wigs and hairstyles. The outfit selection was a group task, each girl's input as valuable as the others, transforming the process into a democratic affair. Amidst this orchestrated chaos, Professor Martinez was Ethan's anchor. Her role was to help him navigate this unfamiliar terrain and make him comfortable throughout the process. To help ease the atmosphere, Professor Martinez suggested adopting a feminine name for Ethan during their sessions. A chorus of excited voices chimed in agreement before settling on the name Scarlet. Ethan felt a jolt of surprise at hearing it, a strange yet intriguing moniker. His heart pounded in his chest as he repeated the name in his mind, his emotions caught between confusion and a burgeoning excitement. He mulled over it for a moment, feeling the weight of the name and what it represented. Then, with a nod of his head and a soft-spoken, I like it, he accepted the name, a sign of his willingness to embrace this new persona and the journey it represented. Scarlet was no longer just a possibility, but a burgeoning reality. Scarlet, Professor Martinez's voice broke through the chatter, a smile on her face as she guided the newly named student towards a chair in front of Natalie. Scarlet could feel her heart pound, a rhythm that echoed her anticipation and nervousness. Her palms were clammy, and she could barely hear anything over the roaring in her ears. Natalie's hands were firm yet gentle a comforting presence as she began the process of transforming Ethan into Scarlet. As she started with a moisturizer, smoothing it onto Scarlet's freshly shaven face, a sense of calmness washed over her. The makeup application was a meticulous process, each product serving a purpose, each stroke of the brush transforming her face bit by bit. Scarlet watched as Natalie applied a light foundation, blending it seamlessly into her skin. Then came the eyeshadow, a sweep of colors that accentuated her eyes. The feeling of the brush on her lids was strange, but not unpleasant. Then Natalie moved on to the eyeliner, her hand steady as she drew a perfect wing, giving her a foxy, seductive look. The application of the false lashes was a weird sensation, but they made her eyes pop, giving them a dramatic allure she had never seen before. As Amelia approached with the wig, a beautiful mane of long, brown hair, Scarlet's heart fluttered. This was the final piece of her transformation. As Amelia placed it on her head, adjusting it until it sat perfectly, Scarlet felt a wave of surrealism wash over her. Then she looked into the mirror. Staring back at her was a woman she had never seen before, yet one she recognized. Scarlet. She traced her reflection, her heart pounding in her chest. There was fear and doubt, yes, but also an undeniable excitement. She barely recognized herself but there was something liberating about the transformation, an unexpected thrill in the unfamiliar. Scarlet took a deep breath, her reflection smiling back at her. This was just the beginning. As Scarlet accepted the bag from Amelia, a fluttering sensation of nervous anticipation swept over her. With a tight nod, she headed towards the bathrooms. Habit directed her to the men's room, but a newfound consciousness steered her towards the women's bathroom instead. Entering the women's bathroom was a plunge into an unfamiliar territory. As she pushed the door open, she found two girls at the mirror, immersed in the ritual of touching up their makeup. They glanced at her direction, amusement dancing in their eyes as they took in her masculine attire. A hot blush of embarrassment rushed to her cheeks, but she understood their reaction. It wasn't Scarlet they were chuckling at. It was Ethan, still visible on the outside. Taking a deep breath, she headed into a vacant stall. 
In the bag awaited a transformation. A crisp white shirt, a short black skirt that she'd never worn the likes of before, and a pair of elegant high-heeled shoes. Lurking beneath the clothes were more intimate items. White panties, a matching bra, and silicone bra fillers. Each piece represented a step on the journey from Ethan to Scarlet. The change was slow. A careful dance between the unfamiliar and exciting. The underwear felt strange against her skin, but not uncomfortable. The bra, although tricky, was soon fastened correctly, the silicone fillers introducing an unexpected weight to her chest. Next came the shirt, contouring her new silhouette, followed by the skirt, a daring departure from her usual attire. Lastly, she stepped into the high heels, the extra height making her heart pound in her chest. She looked at herself in the mirror, and for the first time, Scarlet looked back. When Scarlet finally emerged from the stall, the bathroom was quiet. The two girls, who were previously chuckling, were now looking at her in surprised silence. Ethan had disappeared, and in his place stood Scarlet, confident, radiant, and ready for the journey ahead. The fluttering sensation of nervous anticipation had now turned into a fluttering thrill, a silent acknowledgement of the transformation that had taken place. With a steady heart, Scarlet left the bathroom and headed back to the classroom, ready to embrace her new persona. As Scarlet stepped out of the bathroom, the confident reflection in the mirror gave way to a clumsy reality. The high heels were proving to be a challenge, each step a teetering dance between grace and imbalance. Well, there's a learning curve I hadn't expected, she thought to herself. The journey to becoming Scarlet wasn't just about the clothes. It was also about mastering the walk, the talk, and all the nuances in between. On her way back to the classroom, she spotted Dylan, a friend from another group. Panic surged through her veins as she instinctively wanted to wave at him, only to remember that Ethan didn't exist in this moment. There was only Scarlet. Dylan looked her way, his eyebrows shooting up as his gaze took her in. He didn't recognize Ethan in the feminine attire, but the appreciative glance told her that he found Scarlet attractive. He passed without a word, leaving Scarlet in a whirlwind of relief, trepidation, and a little thrill of victory. Finally, she reached the classroom door, her hand resting on the cool metal knob. Taking a deep breath, she allowed herself a moment to reflect. This wasn't just about a competition. It was about understanding herself and others better, about challenging norms, and about sparking conversations. As she turned the doorknob, she couldn't help but wonder where this journey of self-discovery would lead her. And with that, Scarlet pushed the door open and stepped into her new world. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel, leaving a like and comment.